techniques that you would be able to track one at once. So for example, I'll start us off, we would say um, string crossing. Maybe we would make that a little bit more broad by saying like different bow strokes. Yeah. Because well no. That could be another one. Yeah, exactly. Well what else do we have as well as Picardo? Obviously Legato. But also Tache. Give us your definition for these. entirely smooth but basically I kind of say to them that detache bowing is like normal bowing like it's not staccato it's not legato it's kind of in the middle yeah. but it is not detached because what they see when they see that most of the word detached is they'll play much more staccato than than I would say it is I like just just normal just normal bows it's just not smooth and not separated but just what happens when, you know, if you, like, in terms of science, if you are going in one direction and then you come back in exactly the same direction, the opposite, like, on the same line, in the opposite direction, you have to stop at the end. It's impossible to not stop because you can't be going this way and that way at the same time. So, therefore, any bow that you do, even if they are legato, they are still stopped at the end. Um, but, so the point is that you don't, you're not trying to make them detached, you're not trying to make them legato, you're just... You're just playing how it comes out of your bow. Um, I may be wrong on this, but Marco, I think. I'm yeah, right. very good. Short bow. Excellent. Connected to, but slightly different from our bow staccato. Excellent effect. Mm. Three takes. Good. This is very nicely separated out into bow side at the moment, so let's just see what we think might be missing from bow side, and then we'll do. Good. I mean, that's both, isn't it? Obviously, but yes. Well, no, not obviously. It's not both. It's not both when they're open string. Doesn't those two books have harmonic? Uh, they. This is interesting. Very, very good. Uh, particularly if it's not your level. They don't have harmonics printed, do they? No. no. But we do agree that yeah. in most cases we're going to teach the harmonic where? End of um, musette. Uh, Good, Boccherini. end of musette. Boccherini. Boccherini. Good. Uh, but that's the other book. Well, I mean it's both, obviously, but it's mostly left hand. Anything else with bow? So this is bow category? Mm -hmm. So what would we say, like expression? Yeah. I think maybe we would put expression that in. Expression is a bit strong. Yeah, yeah, I think we would maybe put that in general musicality. <coughs> yeah. Which is going to be another section. Um, but I think both <coughs> distribution. Yeah. 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 And what's the biggest one that is a, a glaring omission for a Suzuki student in this column? I'll just sneak that in there as if we always put it first. Yeah, good. I think, um, I mean, of course, there are always more. But I think that's pretty, that's a good start, let's say, yeah, yeah. and exhaustive. Okay, good, so left hand. String crossing. Good. So some of them obviously are going to be 
Speedway. Just tell us one more thing, that, what, what would your focus be on the string crossing in the left hand rather than the right? Good. Um, so, different hand finger shapes well versus or uh, key shape or chord shape depending on who. Finger patterns. Finger patterns, yeah. Good. Um, shifting. Good, Bex. Um, harmonics, good. Can we think of something slightly more basic that we could give its own category rather than pick? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely vocals and string. Well, it does it change the left hand? I guess it doesn't really change the left hand that much. Um, oh, <laughs> oh good. Um, right, you can keep thinking while I just put that in the bin and try and get it. Session, what are the two main skills that you build independently of each other before they come together as being one for the shifting? Playing with like, small notes, decisions with small notes. Um, so, can you put that into one nutty sentence? Adjusting for position? Um, I don't think someone who let's say a book to your parent would understand what you mean. Can someone say what Joe is trying to say? Um, <coughs> well, it's intonation in different places. So yeah, being able to play in the change. position, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So being able to play in third and fourth and second position yeah. is one skill, separate from getting in and out of it. Yeah. And then yeah. the actual shifting yeah. is the other thing. So I think that while you're not wrong, unless we're gonna go into minute detail, going into second, going into third, going into fourth, and coming back again, are the act of shifting and playing in those positions. Right, so, are the, so should, those are the two things that so I would separate. So should we list those positions separate, where yeah. we're going to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So actual shifting and playing in second, third.
Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I just, we don't really play in it for very long. I guess I wouldn't really call it playing in it, but yeah, no, you're, yeah. I wouldn't practice okay. playing go to that radio half position is what I'm thinking. For uh, example. Right, in the yeah. But you're absolutely right, we do need to play a few notes at a time in, in um, half position. Is it in the bottom of the other G? It's not half position, it's just low ones and low fours. This is hard. <laughs> I would say, I would say that, I mean, obviously this gets kind of like very academic, but I would say that in order for you to feel that you're playing in half position, you've got to have either the two a semitone away from the, the lowest one that you can play, or the three on the, like if you're on the A string, on the C sharp. Because as soon as you have the three on the D on the A string, then you're just in yellow finger pattern in B flat major, aren't you? Yeah. And because the hand frame is so connected to those threes, I think while your three is on D. that normal place, mm -hmm. you still feel that you're in first position with a low one. But it's that bringing everything down that makes it half position rather than just a low one position. Um, right, okay, so thank you. Anything else to add on left hand? <coughs> Fingers blocking? Right. Yeah, I can't just do anything on double stops or anything. Blocking, yeah. And I guess at a much earlier stage. Curl fingers. Uh, mm, yeah, but I mean, once you get the fingers down, if you don't have double fingers, you're in trouble. Bex, what would you say is the opposite of blocking? Uh, like independent fingers. Exactly right, yeah, independent fingers. Anything else? I sort of fast left hand, so like in Dark Sector like Bot, you suddenly sort of got to do seven yeah. fingers. Far right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, fast notes, <laughs> fast runs. Or how can we express this better? Um, fast fingers. Fast fingers, yes, I guess. That does it. Just wait for the board to dry. <laughs> Fish fingers, fast fingers. Uh, anything else? Uh, I've got quite, it's quite a, a thing about ringing notes and doing things into a tune. Yes, so, so what should we put in first? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> But I mean, you know, I know why we didn't. It's because basically, like I was saying about tunnel fingers, if you're not playing in tune, then I mean, it's not really a. It is a technique, but you want to be thinking about it all the time. But let's put yeah. it in there. Tone and intonation. <laughs> the big two, yeah, yeah. in fact. Yes. Good. And then non, like other. Um, well, musicality. Good. Um, awareness, Jack. listening. Yeah. Sorry, Joe? Um, I was going to say awareness of two-dimensional space. That might not be. Yeah, so like theory? Yeah. Ed, what are you going to say? Major omission in our first column. Omission. Omission. Something we've missed out. Um, rhythm. Dynamics. Well done. In fact, that should be here, really, shouldn't it? Because that's the other. Now, has that been that, that, or has that just always been tinkered with as kids have learned? Is it? Is, I mean, it's interesting question. What do we think is the answer? Yes and yes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, there is the basic posture, but you have to tailor that to each child. And if their arms growing older than 
you know, as they're getting older, their bodies change, mm-hmm. and you still have to adjust to make sure that physically their instruments are such that they can do this. But is that development, or is that just maintenance? Maintenance. Because I would say, yes, it does develop, but maybe not so much in books one to three. Like, by the time you're playing book five, you would like a child to be more aware of their breathing, uh, leading, moving more. But books one to three, if you've got a kid who kind of stands there and plays, I'm still pretty happy. I mean, maybe towards the end of book three, we might be talking about moving. There's a bit of leading, definitely. But, um, so leading could sort of be, you said that already, didn't you, moving on, Uh, could be something separate. But I think, I think the posture does develop. And I think also, as soon as you've started introducing shifting and vibrato, you are holding. It's a you you way have way. a more. You have more of a relationship with the left. Like that could be construed as being part of posture development, couldn't it? Like that increased awareness of all of this, mm. without that, that, or whatever, mm. all of those things happening. And also that as the violins get bigger, you do want them to take more weight in the left hand. We do not want kids on three quarter size violins holding entire violin weight with the head only. No, so... Um, so yeah, that, I think I it think definitely does develop, but it's quite subtle. The interesting thing you said there was posture awareness rather than posture. Because I, I find, I think, posture awareness is really key. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have it. Yeah. And, but that's slightly different to just developing somebody's posture. Um, well, will you be able to develop their posture without them also developing awareness of it? Occasionally, maybe. Yes, but yes. Mostly I think, so. I think, really. I think um, self-awareness is a very, very weird kettle of fish. And it's just if somebody's telling you and you keep saying, no, do it and go, and you, you keep changing it, you don't really know well, you could be going into all this if you don't really have the posture awareness of that I know that this is now going back to my back, but my teacher says it looks good. Mm. Um, I'm over exaggerating, obviously. Yeah, please relax, you're making me yeah, yeah. very uncomfortable. But, <laughs> yeah, but if, you, if you're feeling yeah. and if you understand what your posture awareness is and that, so it's, it's, a, it's a very different thing, it's a huge. There's uh, a very posh word for 100,000 extra brownie points. Does anybody know which word is also pertinent to this discussion? Shows like, I want those points. <laughs> You've lost clue. It's not posture. <laughs> <laughs> not the last one, is it? Mimi's going to get hungry. I know it! Dimension? No. Good guess, though. Mm-hmm. 50 gold points to you. <laughs>
get exactly what you can do if you use your eyes. <laughs> so that is proprioception. It's your awareness, the awareness of your body in space from from you, yeah. the sense of it's actually very weird that we don't really have a word. I think proprioception is the sixth sense. Like we don't have a word for it because it's like without using your it's the sense of where your body is in space. It's not the sense of touch. It's not sight or smell or whatever. Anyway. Spatial awareness is different, but it's Yeah, but connected. it's very much connected. It's very connected, yeah. So proprioception. Could somebody please Google it for me? Because I hate to spell words wrong. And I just want to know if that's an O or an A. Is <laughs> bloody hell! Impressive. The <laughs> awareness. Feel free to close one of the windows if you're cold. No, no. Of your body in space. Um, is that it? Yes, it's a no. Yes, got it. Right. Uh, 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Did you say sight reading? Good. Right? Yeah. A million brownie points to you. <laughs> um, yes, and then of course in terms of like playing together there are lots of skills that we could talk about developing in Greek lessons such as leading, playing together, feeling the past, blah, 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 which we're not going to talk about here because this is like individual lessons kind of stuff for now. Okay, good. So, um, Bex, which one would you like to start with from the in more important end of each of one of those columns. <laughs> um, slurs. Okay. So, how, where do we first get a slur kit? Take your time. So, your assignment for this week is to write this Introduced in Minuet 2, and then it's developed in Gossett Gavot because we've got the semi quaver slur. Good, it is developed in Gossett Gavot, but before that, Minuet 3. Yes, Minuet, so Minuet 3 is the slur piece, isn't it? You get all of that slurring, loads and loads and loads of it. So, what 
can we do if we feel that our student is going to need something in between their first ever slur in Minuet 2 and then 7,020 slurs in Minuet 3? Good. Would you like to show us what you would do? Um, if I have to, sure. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. I do try and be very careful with asking if you'd like to or instructing, but I think you really would like to. <laughs> you also don't know me, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> you already actually speak loud in words, babe. You're about to do it, so. Um, what made this play like? So what would you teach your students to get them comfortable with slurs? And when, someone else, when would you teach this? Well, you show us first and then we'll talk about that. Well, we just kind of like playing, well, we could start with open, so that's an easy one, to play D, A, E, so. And then sure is where you play nice, ring strings are evenly, nice and low. Whatever. That makes sense. And then maybe just adding fingers. So I kind of like what Emma's doing, but obviously less notes in the one, but like. No, hang on. And then obviously like progressively adding each more note and all that. Okay, good. So I think your fir the first thing you did is actually quite difficult. It's quite difficult to play three notes, oh. three open strings. Evenly, I think it's easier to practice what you did the first time. So you could. So can you develop that a little bit, Bex? Could you show us what you would do with a book one? Wait, what? You said the first one was hard, and then you said you'd go back to the first one. Sorry, go back to the second one. Oh. That's just me not saying what I mean. <laughs> um, so you could do something like this. Good. And then, and then you could add the second finger. So. So where do you think we would introduce some slurs? Ish. Sorry. Uh, another one. Ish. Just before that. Um, yeah, what's just before that? S2. Is S2 a good time to introduce something else? No. No. <laughs> Mountain Peace! Yeah. Yeah. So where is a good point? To introduce something like this. Yeah. So, all of you would have done the exercise mm -hmm. that you just had to. So, at minute two. Too late. Do you suddenly have to play? Do 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 do. Sorry? Uh, perpetual motion. Perpetual motion or Alberta and Antina. Alberta and Antina are pretty simple for most kids. They've been playing, if you are doing your triple layer teaching, which of course you will be, because otherwise I should just save you forever. Um, mm -hmm. Triple layer. So, the preview. And the main piece and the review. Yeah. So basically doing things earlier than you need them and then practicing them in the review to develop them. Um, if you are doing that, then you will have been doing DNA and some G for ages by the time they first get to Allegretto. So playing on your DNA won't be hard. And the rhythms and stuff, like most kids pick up Allegretto and Antonio fairly easily, which is great because you are also preparing for etude at that point. But to add in a little slur is like really not a big deal. These exercises are taking us, what, half a minute of a lesson? Yeah, and then half a minute in practice. So if you're not gonna overload them, but you will if you try and do it at the same time as etude. Okay. Any great out of repertoire pieces that have slurs in that everybody should know? 
Well, that again. Any great out of repertoire pieces that everybody should know, like uh, Hungarian dance for Lotus for Slaz? I don't know. I mean, this is not this is not a test. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if anybody has one that they use. I mean, they're not. It's not super difficult for most kids. It's pretty fun. Um, good. And so then, development in book two. Uh, well, eventually you get Music. to the Casals stuff. Um, good. Music. Good, yeah, loads of slurs, and also what gets introduced in Musette. Your favourite film? Um, one of them. Yeah! <laughs> I do like it. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> do you want to turn this to face you? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry! Um, okay, development. Musette, yes. Just think through the pieces. So, first piece, book two, Ed? Judas. Yeah. Obviously, it has slurs in, but it's not really the main point of it, yeah? And then we have Musette, Joe's the third piece. Well done. How does that fit for slurs? Slurs fast. Yes, development of Gossip. Yeah, so fast runs. Um, Good. Next piece, Ed. Uh, Decent Nazi Papa is a very good song for this one. Is that a hard start, eh? <laughs> We're talking smooth slurs. Smooth slurs, yeah. yeah. Smooth slurs. Um, so you can leave that long, long ago. And we are there. Good. Massive slurp, oh, massive yeah. slurp piece. Why? Yeah. What's different in waltz than what we've done before for slurs? Change in the speed. Exactly. Yeah. Bow, speed, change in. Good. Then what's the next piece? Slurp so part. Um. Can you sing it if you can't name it? Reiterating the tone within a smooth slur. 
Um, Reiterating the time within a split circle. Yeah. That's the definition. That's the one. Can you tell I've got an English literature degree? <laughs> Use it to help me. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, I've it already. What's it Reiterating the tone within a smooth slur. <laughs> I shall just reiterate that for you, Ed. Uh, right, yes. and uh, Boccherini is definitely all about the slurs because of. Have I spelled that right? You can't even see how I spelled it because my handwriting's so no, bad, so never mind. Huh? Two C's. Two C's. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, keep singing. Well, we've already had a lot of slurs, right? Slurred trills. No? Slurred yeah. trills. Yes, a term. The first term, really. It's a written out term. Oh, that's the first time that happened. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, like combining many of the above elements.
Yeah, we probably don't need a whole half an hour. Yeah. Let's talk about written work and down as well, but we'll make sure that we're all yeah. on the right track. track. I did shut the door after you came in, yes. Yeah.